thanks everyone for uh, participating in uh, in this uh, session which is hosted by skilling on uh, job opportunities and uh, thanks for sparing your time on a saturday evening uh, with, along with you all i welcome mr ashinto so for uh, accepting this and for uh, coming forward uh, to participate in this session so mr shinto is the director of southeast asia operations in ldr technology and he is a very influential leader as well as an entrepreneur for over uh, 25 years of uh, experience in the industry he has been handling um, many embedded software safety critical mission critical uh, applications for over past 17 years and he has been an active member in many government bodies academy and professional organization and uh, shinto uh, is a good friend of us and uh, he is there to answer all us question today that we have on uh, safety critical embedded software, uh, software and why this is very important when it comes to embedded aspirants so we have so many things uh, to discuss with them as you i am also equally excited uh, in the discussion with uh, shinto hi shinto over to you um, i appreciate you know you guys inviting me the subject is very close to my heart if you ask me i, I started day one in this area where uh, hardly any programs used to talk this language except in uh, some nuclear centers or even some aerospace programs space programs that's it but today you look around anywhere uh, you see people talking about safety security so we will probably will see that why this shift that has happened uh, looking at the nature of the audience i believe uh, many may not know what is embedded itself so we will start off that itself you know what do you mean by embedded what do you mean by safety uh, why this so called uh, shift that is happening in our society uh, what drives these changes and what opportunity exists for us and then if you want if you know what all those opportunities how to grab those opportunities the next one so uh, i hate using slides but how are you know to explain this basic concept next 15 minutes or so i will run through a couple of slides uh, now whether you are from circuit branch or does it doesn't matter this session i will make it in a way where even anybody can understand so that doesn't matter so this is a topic i'll uh, just one slide i will talk about Where the where are we from? We are from Liverpool. Last forty six years, uh, we have been in this business. Whenever people talk about software safety or security, uh, this is the first name today people talk about because we work with the world's largest aircrafts, like from the P eighty to the largest nuclear programs to fighter programs. Uh, wherever safety security is there, you will find us. And uh, to be frank, it is an academic offshoot from Liverpool University. So whatever we do, uh, even this program, you know, uh, one of the connect I have is I spend uh, a lot of time in skilling related activities. I sit on the board of several universities. Uh, I also drive our global university program in within LDI because of passion towards this area. Uh, with this uh, understanding, let me take you to the history. Now, when I joined engineering in 1990, as I told you, 99 percent of the processes, even 99 more than 99 percent of the processes getting shipped in the world used to go to PC world. Now, any idea after 32 years, what is the percentage of processes going to PC world today? While gas is less than one percent. Now that's where the shift that happened in our society. Why that has happened? The first point is the concept called pervasive computing. What is pervasive computing? Pervasive computing means computing for anyone, anytime, anywhere, not restricted to a machine on a desktop or a laptop. No, wherever you go, you see computing. That is pervasive computing. Why? People wanted increased efficiency. So whatever you're doing could be your washing machine, your car, your medical device, your gaming machines, whatever you do. That's where actually. people started putting computing into those devices now what really drove the demand for this sector one is people wanted intelligence because of efficiency factors the most important part is the connectivity earlier it was wired connectivity today nobody talks about wired it's all about wireless so the wireless connectivity was the main shifting factor in this game you talk only about normally mobile phones right it's only a small fraction of this game we are talking today anything and everything you your car seat to your uh, you know music systems to your washing machines anything and you at home whatever your you, your remote there's no nothing in this world where you don't find an embedded computing device attached today i don't know whether you noticed two weeks back or last month yeah elon musk announced chips that can trigger your neuro 
neurons in your brain, right? That means you can put a chip in your brain and start controlling the behavior of your brain, whether it's good or bad, but it has got a huge medical application. Now, the next one is semiconductor industry. As I told you, the chip industry has completely shifted towards the embedded field. And during this field uh, transition, what has happened is people wanted complex functionality. So what happened? The semiconductor industry became so complex. Today, we are not talking about the, the limitations of Moore's law. You can have multi-core. Nothing stops you from increasing power on your devices, computing power on top of it. Even if you have heat issues, you will overcome that. That's the technology that has come. The hardware industry has grown like anything. What about the software industry in this game, especially the embedded software? The size of the software has grown like anything, like an elephant. Now, whenever software grows like anything, it also brings in safety security issues. Now, guys, that is where we company like LDRA survives. People want more functionality, more software on your devices. We will see a couple of use cases what's happening in the industry today, particularly automotive industry. I'll take an example and show you what has kind of changed that has happened in the industry. Let me take you automotive industry that has happened. I call it 360 degree digitization. When I say 360 degree uh, digitization, the complete car is getting digitized, one aspect, but the design, development, testing, including the car, the car Fast testing of your car can be digitized. It can be done in a simulated world. The complete life cycle of design development testing can be done through a digital twin platform. That's a world which we are living in. We call it, you know, the software defined cars. Now, when you go like that, this is the current trend right now. We call it PACE, personalized, autonomous, connected, and electric, where the embedded software running in your car drives this transition. Even if it's an electric car, you will find the number of lines of code in these modern cars is more than the world's largest civil aircraft, Airbus 380. My customer will be. This has happened in the last couple of years itself. So as you go forward, this is going to drive. Where even you want to, want to personalize your car experience when you are driving, again, software is going to play a major role. So more and more software. And let me take you the, the next side of the game. First, world's most expensive car crash has happened in a highway in Japan. Any idea? We're talking about, you know, more than 10 cars hitting at the same time. Look at the shape, the accident site. Any idea how many people died? None. None. That's what we call about safety is all about. Safety comes by design. Another aspect from a safety angle, years back, Boeing Dreamliner, the new aircraft which they launched, got grounded, basically on safety ground. What does it mean? Boeing lost billions. So safety can kill your brand. Safety can cause financial losses. Safety can create deaths if not managed properly. So it also comes after Roti Kapra Makan, right? The food shelters, safe, you know, that is the first thing, the, the, the Indian context, we call it the basic necessity of human beings is food, shelter, clothing. After that, only the safety security comes in. So we as a country, if you take, or most of the countries in the world, we have passed through that basic things. Today, we are in a level where economically we are, we can afford better, safe and secure systems. Now, let me give you a basic definition of what is safety and what is functional safety. Safety is nothing but it is an acceptable risk that you can take if something goes wrong. For example, if your car hits an accident, it happened. But how do you, how far you can accept a, a damage or an injury? That's the definition of safety. Now, you might ask me, what is the difference between the overall car safety, which people are talking about, you know, five-star car safety rating, where, you know, the Indian car manufacturers, particularly in India, you can see the... Mahindras and uh, Tatas, just on the safety ground, they've beaten the rest of the foreign players. So overall car safety game is, is a different exercise where you perceive you are, you know, subject the car to a crash test and rate it in a level of an agency called NCAP, it does that. And what is the functional safety? Functional safety goes to each subsystem, it could be a braking unit, it could be your uh, airbag unit, it could be anything what in your car. At that, each functional unit, you test it and you clear it for a functional safety framework. We'll go a little more deeper and, you know, on that subject for you to get an idea. Now, there is another aspect. We talk about safety and security. Look at two cars. Car which belongs to several decades back, a car which belongs to the last decade, which had a little more software content in that. The first car, is it safe? No, but it's secure because not enough software was there for people to hack. So what does it mean? The more the software component in your car, on your medical device, in your aircraft, anything, 
your attack area is increasing right so you are inviting security issues even though you are adding safety parameters to your devices it is you know it's such a dichotomy so that means you know when you are designing a system you need to be aware that you know by loading more software and electronics you are also probably inviting another trouble the security factor now as i told you safety and security are two sides of the same point just by making your car safe doesn't mean that you are safe forever you need to look at the security aspect also you go to youtube you will find the jeep hacking story how on a highway somebody could remotely hack a jeep car and making your life miserable uh, in fact you know even in india i have been discussing with the government of india where government is really worried how to prevent a car lying on the road somebody can remotely start it and take it as a terror weapon on the road that's a world which we are living in so these two aspects are the one which will drive uh, the entire world in the coming days let it be automotive let it be industrial systems let it be your you know uh, your toys as you load with more and more software and electronics it is an inevitable evil provided you know, if you are prepared for that that's where the, you know the whole discussion today is actually that what opportunity exists for so there's such a boom is happening and uh, we will see you know what kind of skills what how we assure safety and security for these devices for that you need to understand a, a, a clear shift that has happened in the last couple of years earlier days when we buy when we manufacture a car people say i follow an excellent quality system quality is nothing but doing anything first time it's a in the right way so you don't have to rework it that's what you call it about quality you, you, you have heard of iso 9001 in automotive you have something called s5 i think but it's a quality model you also hear about you know six sigma models where parts per million people say okay i one of the cars out of 1 million could have a quality defect that's acceptable level of quality defect now from that today we are living in a world with the software and electronics loaded into a car that concept approach is alone doesn't work because the failure of your ecus in the car your braking unit or your airbags it throws up a different pattern it doesn't fail like your traditional mechanical systems so that is where a concept called a risk based approach came into existence and the risk based approach is nothing but systems engineering principle it is derived derived from the systems engineering principle now you might ask me what does it mean for me and my recommendation to each engineer today is if you are an engineer you should be a systems person you should not think in terms of cut and paste okay i need i learned the language i am a i am an engineer no this is where actually we engineers go wrong in modern world people in particularly in indian context people learn one language and they say i am an engineer so if you are going to engineering college make sure that you know you you, you think big you think from a systems perspective where you know uh, you start looking at in a car like you know your braking unit you take an example in a in, a, in an aircraft if the landing gear fails the flight control fails as good as the aircraft crashes we call it catastrophic accidents right in 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 a in a car your entertainment system fails in aircraft the entertainment system fails it doesn't matter so depending upon the impact of the failure the risk assessment is done in aerospace we call it the five level assessment in automotive we call it the four level assessment they call it asls automotive safety integrity level asl 1 2 3 4 means asl asl d a, a b c d that's what we call it asl a b c d in in um, in automotive in aerospace we call the five level a b c d e so that there is a big exercise people do in terms of uh, making sure that you know uh, a, a system is safe Right? now coming back to this exercise uh, it is a systems engineering principle uh, you don't have to worry too much about it but just make sure that you know if if you are an engineer just google just google and find out you know what do you mean by systems engineering any subject if you are an electronics engineer also electrical engineer also computer science person also even if you are a mechanical engineer also go to google find out what is systems engineering uh, with that approach let me take you to the world of standards you have a couple of bulbs here right what is common what is standardized in these devices any wild guess it is the interface right imagine these all these bulbs are having different interface what would have happened right whenever your bulb uses you will be running around to find the fitment now with this standard interface you can go to any shop and say i have this interface give me a bulb any brand doesn't matter so that is a world of standards standards with standard you can still be competitive you can add if you look at these bulbs Each are having on a different design, right? It is a luminous intensity; it could be different. 
you still can compete having following some standards so when you come to safety security world you still can compete each other by following standards so some some people say oh you know you are not allowing me to innovate in my car because so much of safety standards you putting no i differ with that having safety standards gives an assurance that people don't die when there is an accident so that is where when you say a safety critical system is a system that is designed for the purpose that if there is an accident people don't die which we all be needed right it is for me it is for you each one of you whether you become a safety engineer doesn't matter but we do that tomorrow when you are buying a product you want to buy a safe product right so these are some of the standards most widely used aerospace follows a standard called do 178b from a software perspective industrial follow uh, which is the mother of all safety standards in all other domain we call it iec 6158 don't worry too much about it it is also a four level assurance standard all these standards listed under the railway nuclear automotive medical all of them are a four level approach means you categorize your subsystems into four levels starting from the highest could be your brake brake unit in a car right the brake fails okay it is guaranteed that you know there will be an accident you could die so railway has got a similar approach don't worry too much about that aspect you you can learn little bit step by step as you go forward now one of the fundamental difference which you will see from an it industry and here is in it what happens is you see a lot of technology talks happens and suddenly the technology and the skills what you learn overnight disappears in this field safety engineering is a fundamental engineering principle it never dies it never dies so whatever engineering principles you learn in this area particularly safety or security engineering areas it is a lifetime skills you work 20 years you work 30 years you are still in great in demand in the industry unlike in the other in the it industry where every time you are forced to learn something new technology here also you, new technologies will come nothing you, it is not a stagnant area you will still deal with new technologies but the fundamental experience what you gain will take you for years just to use cases this is from the aerospace industry where they follow the system safety assessment process as it usually the systems engineering process they call it the arp aerospace recommended practice and then you come down you bottom line you take two areas right one side is the electronics part followed in the auto, the auto uh, aerospace industry right side is the software part in software also you have on board software running in a aircraft as well as ground traffic control both need to be seen so then there are other standards for model engineering model based engineering you know full qualification formal methods and so many other things you don't have to worry too much about it so i i just give you an example that you know when you enter into an aerospace industry this is what you are going to enter into it is a lifelong learning exercise every step you go further you you moving up the ladder and you are not going to waste what even an year in this game because whatever you study next is as a build up on what you studied first right same way in in so it is when you go to the next level i have this another example for from the automotive industry there is a standard called iso 2662 i spoke to you about functional safety this is a standard framework used for an automotive electronics development today don't worry too much about it you look at the part 6 part 6 of this standard talks about software okay part 11 talk about semiconductor if you are going to use semiconductors in your car you are supposed to follow this if you are going to launch a bike you need to follow part 12 we have customers in two wheeler segment as well as in four wheeler segment they follow this as a bible and you won't believe from next year if you want to sell any uh, automotive electronic part in europe they need to follow a security standard called wp29 without security certification they won't allow you to sell anything in europe and slowly you will see these standards becoming a bible across the globe so when i say bible no deviation no deviation will be allowed so if you know c programming if you know a little bit of embedded programming what you need to go is next is start thinking like a systems person when you look at the car you should look at what is there inside the car each are the subsystems how they are talking to each other that's where your engineering mind comes in when you see a medical device you should look at what is the overall medical device running don't please don't look at okay i mean i did a gui that is what the typical application developers do right now believe me guys these gui developers they come and go but 
in our field whatever you develop it will last forever you will have still more new technologies like you know ai a lot of things will be coming into this area you still be dealing with them but then the fundamental principles remain the same now coming back to why we when we look at today in the industry this is the issue which we are facing there are a lot of opportunities but there is a skill gap now what is the need of the market when i deal with my customers they are looking for full stack engineers an engineer who understand from an overall perspective right if you have a product development mindset from the beginning to end please don't think that you know i am an engineer let me look at only basic coding or let me look at only testing no if you are a tester also you should know how the overall medical device works how an overall you know uh, breaking unit works this is an engineering mind and a typical arts college student can't learn this and that's what i strongly recommend to get into this area the reason is you don't com- get a competition from a non engineer rest be assured whereas in the other areas we go to an it sector it is cyclical highly cyclical in nature demand goes up and down and anybody can and the next thing is you work 15 years 20 years you still face a challenge from a pressure that very next day a pressure comes and replaces you this is an area every year you add your expertise in in the company like ldi you will find uh, you know people working in 50s 60s 70s because they are in great demand because they come with that kind of experience in dealing with a reactor or an aircraft or a missile or whatever it could be it's a lifelong learning experience so this is my summary that you know uh, we work with the uh, ecosystem to make sure that you know the right skills are available uh, in a country like in india where we we work that's where actually our association with skilling came into picture we worked with its skilling uh, to develop a, a, a verification course uh, in in terms of you may ask why verification very simple out of the jobs which are available today in the market verification jobs are the most commonly de- in demand which is especially in a, in a country like india lot of uh, testing jobs are getting outsourced to india this because most of the companies make sure that you know testing is not done by the designer and developer the third party person is better worth doing the testing so with this uh, let me conclude i'm sure you know you might have questions you could uh, raise your questions thanks and uh, thanks for your uh, very insightful uh, presentation i'll uh, look for questions from the participants so members if you have any questions please post it on the chat so that uh, i can take up your questions on behalf of you so before that i have some questions uh, from uh, my experience from my end uh, shinto one thing that we have observed from lot of our customers are our students as a mindset that they feel uh, that understanding about uh, verification validation and going for a job role that's associated with verification validation is slightly inferior than taking up a development role so uh, what's your thought on that okay if for that actually uh, i should take you to organizations like isro okay isro is my customer you won't believe the verification team has got an upper hand on the design development team because they are the five ones who finally clears a product now from a practical perspective also uh, i am not against development or job development is good nothing wrong with the development job uh, if you get a chance please take it there's nothing uh, the, you should not look at it that but if if you look at the safety market more than 50% of the time i mean if you take a civil aviation sometimes even 60% of the time of the entire aircraft development life cycle is spent on testing so more people are required in testing than you know in 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 the development most of the you know development the job also it is getting automated it is just getting automated you they go they put the whole thing into a model based framework and the code is generated but still it needs to be tested thoroughly and and on the host level at the target level and the certification exercise is a very lengthy process second this is an area where you need for engineering expertise uh, uh, without engineering background without for as told the systems engineering principles you are not going to survive in this area so by getting into this area uh, from a job opportunity point of view also as i told you know this has got this sector has got more job openings than the you know uh, development job from an indian perspective most of the time the development or design they do it elsewhere in the world the testing is the one they want somebody else to look at finding fault in others job is 
easy, right? Doing it might be difficult, but that is a perspective. But there are some sectors like aerospace, mandatory that, you know, you need to have a third party verification to be done. So there are a lot more avenues for growth and uh, being an engineer is a lifeline in learning. So it is not a bad job. It is only the perception in India among some sector of people. Those who are working in this field, you can ask them that, you know, uh, they enjoy it. It's a lifelong learning. The only thing is, don't go the manual test way. That is boring. Today, you don't have to do the manual testing. You can use powerful tools like LDRI and then use your expertise. Your expertise, nobody can replace. You need to build your expertise, then use tools like automate certain activity. Don't go behind the manual testing. It is boring. Thanks. Thanks, Shikram. So here is the next question that's coming. Uh, so and you, I think you uh, having a chance to work with very close with academia and being part of many board of uh, studies. So what exactly you feel as a current gap in uh, the uh, current academia, especially in the core domain, and uh, how will they are able to uh, use uh, the uh, and like the other day they have understood that in this era digital skills play a vital role. So where do you see that gap? Okay, see it is like this. Everybody knows the problem. Okay, industry people also tell, oh, academy is not doing things. You ask academic people, they say industry people are not helping us. It's a chicken or egg situation uh, always. And uh, I have been both sides. I've been seeing this game from both sides. And I always say, work closely is the solution. I personally have spent, you know, we have done so many faculty development programs. Uh, but however, uh, there is always this issue that, you know, um, end of the day, it doesn't work for various reasons. I still don't know what made in Indian context it, it doesn't work because this blame thing, people are very good in finding fault and blaming each other. And very few people are, people are interested in fixing this issue. So the only way forward is uh, one is, you know, creating a, a framework which is something in between. That's where actually a skilling kind of platform, I found it, you know, very relevant that, you know, uh, you, you are somewhere in the middle where uh, the benefits of both sides can be taken and uh, bring some content. The other option for academia is actually there's a concept called, you know, professor of practice, where a lot of people, industry people can go back to academia and teach. So that's a, that's a combination of uh, model will work better for us. But the current model is not sustainable. Uh, it has to change. You know, people like me, you know, I, I keep fighting that, you know, it's not the question of blaming. It, we need to work together with the academia. And, and from an industry perspective, it is the other way. I have customers uh, who say, you know, uh, I'm ready to invest on your tools, but where are the engineers? I don't have engineers to work on. So we, why we are there in this business, you know, in spending, I personally drive this itself is, I see a direct growth path of my business when I produce skills in this country. And you know, India is the is the land of skills. And if you win this battle in India, we win the world. Because most of the work is happening in this country. So if I produce the right skills in, in this country and my business grows in this country, my parent company win the world. So I get all the support from my parent organization. So it works two ways, actually. You know, my customers are happy. Uh, we we help uh, the youth to find the jobs. End of the day, it's a win-win game for all. Right? As a company like us also, we can't grow ourselves. We have to grow with the ecosystem, find the you know our portion of the success along with others. Thanks, thanks. So friends, actually, I, I suggest you know you could park your questions either in the chat box or you can you know straight away put these questions to uh, Jagan. Uh, yeah, uh, so I think Shinto and Joseph, uh, Shinto and Jagan, uh, you know, we received like a couple of questions in my inbox. Uh, so one is, uh, you know, a question asked by Abhik. Uh, so to uh, develop a, a car or, you know, a bike's uh, software, sometimes we see uh, they fail, you know, just as the traction control uh, system fails and accident occurs. So what might be the reason or what might be the uh, or what might be the developer's fault? Okay, you asked the right question. Uh, you know, normally what happens in this field is uh, you can't blame the developers because in automotive industry, safety was never a concern. From a software angle, safety was not a concern. Normally, they used to think that like the bike safety, normally the tire, brake system, 
which is mechanical things car again brake mechanical brakes this was the mindset even if some software was added in the car yeah it works yeah functionally there's no issues that was the mindset which was predominantly there in the automotive industry suddenly when the content of software started increasing people did not change that mindset so they continued it many of them even downloaded some freeware software open source you know softwares also were downloaded i don't want to tell there are so many examples right now in indian context itself the open source when they loaded into their cars and bikes what happened uh, so it's okay you use open source but then we call it software with unknown pedigree if you are using something with unknown pedigree make sure that you do test it thoroughly for safety so ideally you should do it by design by design the software should be safe by development it should be safe that means use the right development environment to develop it the safe environment to develop it means your os should be safe your compiler should be safe to use it your uh, testing should be for safety practices so safety i told you know it comes by design it doesn't come by accident so by downloading some you know freeware coming from somewhere and download loading into the car it is working fine but on the way it fails and create accidents it will die this is what has happened in most of the places uh, you look at the, the battery fires happening right batteries were never tested properly for safety this is where actually people made noise that you know it started moving suddenly you see everywhere fire happening ye kya hai ya it was never tested for safety so when you know that you know you're playing with fire please test it thoroughly design it and it actually start from the design you know it's from the design design development so i spoke about iso 2622 i spoke about you know erp framework they are all nothing but design framework it starts with the design it starts with the development it starts with the testing so it is not a easy game so if anybody thinks that you know it is an area where i can learn a, a, a gui kind of thing and get away with this sector sorry i strongly recommend this is not your area you should go back to our it do some cut and paste job be happy with that but if you think that you know i want to be an engineer i want to challenge my skills uh, where i can save my 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 fellow citizens from dying and not only dying it's an evergreen career as i told you na it's an evergreen career it doesn't die as a career safety is something you know you will never find as far as this world is there it will be there yeah maybe we will go to the next great uh, thanks a lot uh, shinto for you know answering that question so next question is you know asked by vardha uh, so, uh, so sir i am a mechanical engineer uh, can i do my uh, post graduate uh, as safety engineer but which field will be better for me okay now i would answer this question recently i was in a discussion with my own college where i did my engineering they started a safety mtech program under mechanical engineering and the people ask why why in only in mechanical it doesn't matter as far as you are an engineer safety is a subject anybody can learn it doesn't matter now safety engineering has got a wider application it need not be in software area it could be your overall system safety of your structures mechanical structures civil structures electronics software it is a wide range of applications are there for a safety engineer now if you want to go to a specific area after that you need to look at you know the standards and methodologies used in for example industrial safety okay process control uh, people who are developing lift i work with people com- companies like pone in chennai so they they develop you know escalators and uh, so there the dynamics are slightly different so it, it is it is a step by step learning you can't learn all these things that's what i know it's a lifelong learning uh, what is required is a plan that you know i want to become a safety engineer fine fair enough and in safety engineering after doing phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 a, a slightly longer 10 year vision you build it and then you work backward and you know, i am telling you uh, as far as you go on a fundamental engineering principle you will not go wrong you are not behind uh, A, a, a concept like AI. Today, everybody is behind AI. I don't know what will happen to AI after five, six years. It will become like you know a, a, a normal uh, thing for everybody, right? It, it, it's for everybody. So instead of that, you know, when you go to a fundamental engineering principle, you will find it will be forever. But don't stop it there. With safety engineering, build your other skills. Even if it's your mechanical, ideally, to be frank. 
in india what is lacking in our country is uh, mechanical and electrical domain should have undergone a massive transformation by putting digital skills electrical in fact uh, last month i was in a serious discussion with the power sector people where i said what is going wrong with this digital skills has to be put it into electrical syllabus mechanical also should need a lot of digital skills because we need a mix of both at end of the day so my request to uh, mechanical engineers is even to it guys please don't stop it with your software skills look at how your software can one run on an electronics hardware that's where your your your, your systems thinking comes into picture please don't stop it with your software programming skills see how you can run it on an embedded hardware that way you become a perfect engineer otherwise i call you as a pattern based software person i'm sorry to use that word but then that's the reality today great um uh, thanks uh, again uh, shinto you know uh, so so couple of few questions you know which i am uh, getting in my inbox is revolving around you know kind of uh, you know software uh, to be you know learned or techno- technology to be learned uh, and and you know what kind of uh, you know industry oriented projects we should be working on right uh, in order to uh, get the technical core jobs in the top tech giants so uh, you know uh, i think uh, uh, if jagen can basically help uh, you know uh, in um, uh you know explaining uh, or if he can basically give a walk through uh through our website uh on two programs like one is online and offline program on embedded uh that will actually help uh, you know a lot of people getting their answer uh like what kind of projects uh, needs to be done what kind of uh, you know software or tools they should be learning and uh, where they can basically you know lend uh, after uh you know doing this uh, kind of you know uh, upskilling thank you thank you uh, so if you see skilling as got as launched a couple of programs were uh, one is on offline uh, pg that we develop we offer on uh, embedded software development and validation for especially for uh, ev systems and uh, also we have one other program uh, that is again uh, online equivalent of this course so in online it's a self paced mode in offline it's 24 week program so if You, you are an engineering embedded uh, job aspirant where uh, you feel that you want to start your career on embedded system so our recommendation is you you should know uh, some of these mandatory skills which uh, either you are learning it by yourself or you are uh, taking it from us without this it's it's really difficult for someone to start into uh, an embedded field or in start their career in embedded field so the one first very first mandatory skill is like you should have a very uh, solid inclination towards writing program and uh, so being an embedded system so the most preferred language is c programming so ideally you need to know the uh, c essentials and uh, basically how do you use c language for writing embedded programs so then post that uh, you need to have some understanding about the kind of software development process and even system development process so in industry it's called as sdlc so you need to know standard terms and standard workflow of different sdlc techniques that's adapted and that is covered in our fundamentals of embedded system course then uh, most industry expects uh, the engineer to write their low level driver are having an exposure of writing low level drivers so which means this shows that you have studied and you have practiced microcontrollers either it a 8 bit microcontroller or a 32 bit microcontroller it could be an arm architecture pic or avr architecture. so in our program we cover avr and uh, arm and there are very uh, superior standard third party Uh, hardware abstraction layer that is existing so we also cover how to port reuse those stacks uh, to build your own application on top of it so that's covered in our uh, device drivers and serial communication course so then we have our very important course which is on uh, software verification validation so years where uh, we have a statistic relationship with uh, ldra and uh, ldra is uh, very very much magnanimous to offer uh, a unique license especially for skilling for skilling students uh, so here uh, we teach some of the basic concepts of verification validation starting from 
uh, static analysis. Why static analysis is important? How do you do static analysis? How do you find static violations? And how do you fix that with the help of tools like LDRA? And how you can generate code coverage report? How you can automate test cases? So Mr. Shinto was telling about uh, uh, how do you automate your test cases? How do you use apply your intelligence for ensuring that the software is uh, is safe to get into a reliable system? So all those things are covered in this particular course. So then we have a course around uh, our EV systems. Uh, and C++ programming. And again, for EV uh, related courses, uh, we go with uh, model-based approach. So we have a strategic relationship with MathWorks where MathWorks is offering tool licenses for all our uh, PG program students. And there we cover uh, basics of model-based development with simulating state flow kind of a tool. Then we have uh, model verification technique there also. So very similar to code verification, model verification, model validation is also one of the common and very important skills that is expected in industry. So then uh, we introduce courses on batteries, on hybrid vehicle, on E&D architecture. So this is what we offer currently as a bundle and we offer as a 24-week long program. Hope uh, this answers your question. So there are a lot of industry aligned projects that one can uh, frame the requirement, implement, and they can uh, develop a very beautiful or a very uh, big portfolio of their uh, resume to participate in uh, the job interviews that's happening in today's market. We have some more questions that's coming up. Uh, uh, I think uh, Mr. Lucky is asking, is this a paid version? Yes, it's it's a paid version. I, I, I don't know. Uh, what do you mean by paid version? Uh, so LDRA uh, doesn't have some sort of trial version or some limited duration. Uh, so LDRA is actually offering a student packed version that is exclusive for uh, the members who are taking this particular program. So same is the case with uh, MathWorks, MathWorks groups. So in my personal chat, I got one question for Shinto. Uh, so that's coming from Rakesh. I'm an engineer doing my final year, interested to get into this embedded and I'm confused to take up the job opportunities on the hardware domain or uh, software domain? Uh, I assume he might be an electronics engineer. Yeah. Otherwise, he will not get this confusion. <laughs> um, so with that, uh, uh, my suggestion is, yeah, uh, there's nothing wrong with the hardware uh, design jobs. It's much more premium than a general embedded thing. No, no doubt on it. But the challenge is two aspects. One is, uh, it is very expensive, you know, to get that skills. Second, the hardware design uh, jobs are normally with the very large firms, semiconductor companies, uh, who goes to the Taiwan colleges only. Uh, so, if you are not from a Taiwan college and uh, try to spend lakhs of rupees. Uh, investing on a hardware design course, uh, probably finding a return on investment will be a challenge in terms of finding a job. So that is where actually I'm talking purely mathematics, end of the day, return on investment. So from a return on investment point of view, uh, job guarantees will be more in the embedded space because more number of jobs are available. Uh, they don't normally care about whether you are from the IITs or you know NITs or uh, they don't bother. What they need is basically people who can develop uh, skills uh, uh, and uh, ideally basics they expect you to know. Because I work with the Taiwan OEMs as well as uh, the OEMs as well as the Taiwan vendors and service providers starting from all the service providers in India. So they expect you know you to come with prepared with the basic skills because they don't have the time to teach you. Uh, so that is where actually we thought, you know, uh, why we spend all this energy with academia or even skilling kind of organization is to make sure that, you know, our clients get a, a pre-processed minimum skill set uh, so that, you know, they don't have to, uh, they don't have time because always a time-bound project, they are busy with that. So if you can make sure that, you know, uh, some basic learning is done before even you get out of the campus, 
please don't even think that you know pass out then i will learn no if you can ideally suppose you have passed out searching for the log this is a pretty issue but don't delay it look my normally people postpone it we will see it later we will see it later from first year on this i have been telling this na we will see it later about eighth semester also i will see it later no today itself take a call that you know uh, make sure that you know you build up your fundamental skills and prove yourself in front of an interview board that you know you are not like a 10 page person you are a true engineer so that for that you know like jagan mentioned you know build up some projects uh, if you are in a co- college level you can even think about multidisciplinary project i mean you can collaborate with one electrical engineer one computer science person and one electronics person you know that makes uh, a perfect fit for a multidisciplinary project many uh, deem universities i can see that they engaging so those are, those are the ways you know you, you can utilize the environment and talk to people in the industry go to linkedin find the right set of people whom you can reach out so please don't think that you know people will get everything in a plate and i have seen that you know uh, just by joining a course in uh, skilling also nothing is going to happen unless you put in your effort burn midnight oil like anything and show that having a cv also no use whatever you claim in the cv should be you should have done it most of the time you know you have a lot of cvs available people download it cut and paste up, attend the interview no don't do that whatever things you done put it and try to defend it and now nobody expect you to have a rocket science knowledge also what they need is basically what the talk means you should be sincere in what you are telling that you should have done i have done five projects only fine i have done only three it's okay but it should have been done by you it should not be copied from somebody else and if you think interview boards are you know jokers or they are fools we can pull them no they are smart enough <laughs> they have seen people like you thousands yeah any other questions thanks thanks shilpa so one last question uh, from uh, my side uh, so you have you have worked very closely with many customers in india so oh, from your observation what is the big challenge that they are facing okay so they, they face actually two challenges one is um, uh, you take uh, any industry take your automotive as a classic example every industry having more or less same problem traditionally they were more on a mechanical oriented thinking and they have a lot of uh, such employees hundreds and thousands of employees with that background now suddenly they actually it is not suddenly this trend started years back probably they didn't act on time right uh, now there is a pressure on them to act where most of these skills are probably redundant or not not worth so they have a challenge they are sincere employees they don't want to throw them out so so they are working on you know reskilling them upskilling them to you know new areas because they they understand the automotive domain very well so that is one challenge you know upskilling and reskilling the, the, the existing employees uh, where my recommendation is they need to spend little more time to learn the fundamentals don't wait for the company to teach all these things outside the company one should be able to because some of these companies you know suddenly what they will do is oh anyway these guys don't know anything they i'll replace them they they will find a bunch of freshers and they take over that now with regard to pressures the syllabuses right now don't address this so they they have projects coming in but then they don't know what to do with these pressures coming in because you all know that the mindset of current generation i don't blame any one of you most of you might be freshers uh, but unfortunately you know my my kids are also in the same age group uh, most of these kids are joining the with the mindset let me get the job and jump so because of this attitude many companies are very reluctant to train them up so which is a very difficult situation ideally uh, you know you better make sure on your career learn things on yourself uh, rather than going to a company and company expecting you to teach everything that era is gone so my strong i i run career you know planning workshop because of passion in this area uh, in fact i run a youtube channel also the same uh, i discuss similar issues i always say our career is our career company has nothing to do with this company or my will have company's problems company's business plan uh, if we don't look after our career uh, we are uh, you know redundant in the industry so make sure that you know you have a plan keep updating your skills and gone are the days of long courses five year course seven year course people taking phd's um, I, i i warn you guys 
please don't go in that route because what is required in today in the industry is right incremental skills today there is a market demand for a particular skill you have that tomorrow another skill comes so upskilling keep upskilling every now and then and with an attitude of learning for life life lifetime learning that's the only way we can be relevant in today's world you think i got an engineering degree that degree is going to take me for lifetime sorry you are digging your grave they want it sir and we are many of us are in yeah i am in my 50s i am my challenge is actually how to cope up with the pressure who is coming in who comes with you know n number of questions this is a challenge we seniors face so for us also staying relevant the only solution is keep learning keep learning keep learning um that is where actually i, we, I see the future of edutech as a business coming in uh, more and more universities i i conduct faculty development programs i keep telling them keep a you know online version of your university otherwise you will die in the near future because uh, more and more students probably would go in that route the bricks and mortar way of our academy probably needs a, a reboot it will happen you know in the coming uh, years great um so thanks uh, shinto i think two more questions uh, came uh, so one question is like um, uh, asked by uh, anmol so i am a electronic engineer uh, but now i am currently working for non tech organization so uh, can you suggest for uh, you know move in my uh, domain field i assume that you are not right now not in the technical area correct yes okay fine nothing to worry as for all you are after all you are an engineer now i i go back to my previous thing who defines our future it's we me and you decides our future right so if you have made up your mind that you know i want to go back to my core skills you need to make up your mind put in a plan uh, do a swot analysis what are your strengths what are your weak areas what are the opportunities you see what are the threat areas for you uh, work on your weak areas uh, you will find that you know some of the skills you might you might have forgotten everything right so nothing to worry we human beings we forget things that's okay but as far as you have that spirit of learning uh, basic programming is something you can start off take a c course uh, to start with brush up your brain you know sometimes you know brain has got a problem that if you don't use it properly start getting rustic virtually it gets rustic so shake your head properly uh make sure that you know start reading something and intellectually you activate your brain i take some time maybe couple of weeks mentally you prepare uh you might get some frustration doesn't matter uh, i strongly recommend whenever you pass you know start this kind of journey mental health is the key thing so start some yoga meditation all these things will help you to stay focused because you are taking a new journey in your life right so mentally prepare sharpen your brain do some exercises for your brain reading habits uh start off in a small way and keep telling your mind every day i will make it i will make it because what you tell your mind mind will respond don't listen to other fellows who tells you boss you will never make it the duniya is this world is like that only people will be telling you not to do not to do not to do you will fail you will fail you will fail and you 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 look at anywhere even if you look at tv channel also tv channels also show you only negativity only nobody teaches you tells you positive things so you need to find your and find out one or two positive buddies talk to those people who can motivate you avoid those negative elements till you prove because you will go back and show them man i have done it till then don't talk to this negative element find some positive buddies uh talk to some industry people there are a lot of you know content available uh, either in skilling or in youtube channels how you can sharpen your skills um, i'm of the opinion that you know age is it's just a number today it's all of what what matters your attitude to learn nothing stops you from learning i wish you all the best i'm sure you will probably recollect these words when you uh, become successful thank you thank you well do you have any more questions uh i think uh, no i think we are done with the questions uh, I, uh yeah i think we are done with the questions yes but um i was super i thank your skilling team for writing for this program i mean the subject is very close to my heart um because as i told you right everybody talks 
negative. Uh, that's the world which we are in. And that negative thinking and negative talks is not going to take us anywhere. Uh, whether we are in academia or industry, keep telling everybody a positive message and uh, making sure that, you know, end of the day, people are successful in their life. That motivates all of us. So that's why I'm here. I really appreciate you guys for hosting this program and for the attendees also. I think uh, if, if there are further queries, reach out to them or me. We are all, me and Jagan, we are very active in LinkedIn. In <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks, Shinto. Thanks for uh, your time. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much, uh, Shinto and Jagan, you know, for the wonderful uh, session. And uh, hope everyone, you know, enjoyed.